Hello everyone, Ron Berger here, coming to you from astrologynewsreport.com. David Anton Savage, our co-host, has unfortunately left the show. He no longer wants to be part of it. So let's take a look at the upcoming planetary patterns and predictions, what's in store in the heavens for September 21st to September 28th and beyond. Tomorrow, September 22nd, is the autumnal equinox. This is the day when the sun crosses over the celestial equator, which is the equator of the Earth projected into space. On this day, the duration of daylight and nighttime is equal. The astrological importance of the equinox is that it is a sankranti, or ingress, of the sun into a different celestial hemisphere. It is a time of transition for the sun, and for this reason the sun is considered weak for results at this time of the year, and similarly for the spring equinox around March 21st. Therefore, no important project should be started for three days on either side of the equinox, in other words, from September 20th until September 25th. Wednesday, September 24th, or actually Tuesday night, is the new moon, which will be at 7 degrees Virgo. This marks the beginning of the Hindu lunar month of Ashvina, named for the nakshatra of the full moon, Ashvini. Except that, this year, the full moon will not fall in Ashvini, but rather in the preceding lunar sign, Ravati. Therefore, the lunar month will have the energy of Ravati, rather than Ashvini. But both of these nakshatras are auspicious, so either way it's okay, as far as that goes. However, an even bigger factor is that the full moon of this lunar month, which will be on October 8th, will be a total lunar eclipse. Since the full moon represents the culmination of the month's energy being eclipsed, that means the month's energy is obstructed. And that means that it's not a good month for new beginnings. And this upcoming total lunar eclipse will be an exact conjunction with Uranus, the planet of sudden, unexpected events. Since the eclipse will be conjunct the planet of the unexpected, we can expect some major disruptions showing up soon after. These can either originate via the hand of nature or have human causes. Total eclipses were considered by the ancients to be portentous. In other words, heralding forthcoming negative events. Since this eclipse is in Pisces, a water sign, we can expect more water disasters, such as storms and floods. We'll have more on this as we get closer to the eclipse date in future shows. Venus leaves Leo and enters Virgo on Wednesday, September 24th. Virgo is Venus's sign of debilitation, meaning that the planet is weakened in this sign as are its significations. The reason is that Venus, the planet of love, devotion, agreement, has difficulty expressing itself well in a sign known for analysis, discrimination, and criticism. But not all of Venus's significations are damaged by Virgo. Venus is the planet of the arts, and Virgo is the sign of details, thus detailed art. Also, Mercury, the ruler of Virgo, is now in Libra, Venus's sign. When two planets are in each other's sign, they form a Parivatna Yoga, which is to say, a powerful combination, a mutual relationship. Venus and Mercury are compatible in Vedic astrology, so this could be a good thing, especially for communications, negotiations, consensus, agreements. Venus becomes combust starting at the end of this week. Combustion means that a planet is so close to the sun that it can't be seen, either as the morning star or the evening star. For the past few months, Venus has appeared as the morning star before sunrise. 
but since Venus progresses through the zodiac faster than the Sun, it has now caught up with the Sun and will disappear as it crosses over the Sun to reappear around November 18th as the evening star on the western horizon at sunset. In the meantime, we're not going to be able to see it. Venus is the planet of guidance. This is because in the ancient world, in the hot desert, travel was often done at night when it was cooler. Thus, the bright beacon of Venus could be depended upon to guide the traveler in the right direction. When we can't see Venus, we are without guidance. Venus is also the planet of money and of value. When we can't see Venus, it's harder to determine the true value of something. Therefore, when Venus is combust, it is a poor time for making important purchases. The weakened condition of Venus is going to extend to Mercury, since the two planets will be in a Parivatna Yoga. That is, Mercury, being in Venus's sign Libra, will have Venus as its dispositor. Venus, being both debilitated and combust, will thereby be extending its weakened state to Mercury. So, it's best to be careful of how you use your money. Be suspicious of what the lawyer tells you. Romance may be off a bit for the next several weeks. And we'll be talking more about this with more details in upcoming shows, of course. Thank you for visiting Astrology News Report. I'll be posting updates during the week on Twitter at Astro News Report.